Harlow, when did you come here and why did you come here? came in 1951 with my parents who were from the East End of London who had been uh, blitzed out in the war. Their um, families had re relocated to the edge of London. They married, were living in one room in Ilford, outside toilets, no facilities. Father had a good job at Briggs, now part of Ford Motor Company. Uh, there I was two and to get a new house, three bedroom, inside toilets, bathrooms, green fields. My parents gave up a lot to move to Harlow. Father went on the building in Taney's Dell, where in our block of 18 houses, I think 17 were in the building trade originally. One person had a car. There was green fields, delight to be brought up. My parents, it was hard, they didn't drive. So transport by bus to East London and Dagnum uh, was difficult for them, but they made a group of friends, settled. My brother was born in 1953, both educated in Harlow, stayed in Harlow for the majority of my life until just recently when hopefully going into retirement. So Lizzie, when you mentioned Taneysdale and growing up, and you, you all have images don't you, in your mind, what, what images Taneysdale growing up are in your mind? In my mind always are the green open spaces out the front where we all played football and successive new families came in, children were playing on the green. Some people objected that the occasional ball would hit the windows, but my mother's attitude was it was good enough for my sons to play out where I could see them in a safe, healthy environment. It's good for future generations. And so you stayed here and so... I stayed here, I went to school, went to Mark Hall, I enjoyed school, stayed to the sixth form. Um, 18, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, I knew it wouldn't be fair on my parents to try to go to university at that stage. Fortunately, the head of the sixth form had just started a part-time antiques business and he suggested I met his accountants. I knew nothing about accountancy as such, um, but it sounded interesting. Uh, the thought that I could work for myself. So I became an article clerk working in Harlow Town Centre. Qualified, was married by that time and in 1974 I joined the firm as a partner at the age of 25. Three years later I broke away and the firm then became what it is now, Geist Wallace Crisp. So uh, we've done, done well, my children all went to Harlow schools, the three sons, off to university and still enjoy Harlow. And as a company here in Mulberry Green, are you part of the community in Mulberry Green or just an office that happens to be here? No, I think we are part of the community. We, we give a local service to that as well as the growing businesses in the new town. I still refer to the new town uh, there. And we try and help and support the various local facilities, the Victoria Hall, a lot of our people go along, and I, I did as well. There some great performances by the youngsters there. And the one is of trying to give something back and being part of the local community. And over the years, you've been involved in sport a lot, I believe. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, heavily involved. Uh, football was my first love, being a third generation West Ham fan, uh, but the skills weren't as good. At 16, I went down to. Uh, played rugby at school, I went to Harlow Rugby Club, um, was a, a member, I still am a member, played for the next 20 odd years, great times, great people around from all the schools, friends who are still friends now, we still meet. Because there was a remarkable period, and maybe when I have my interview with Adam Price, we may go back onto that more fully. Algae. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, there was a remarkable period in the 70s, you know, where all the Welsh PE teachers Welsh came. Welsh PE, it was very much Harlow became there, the green and white shirts became red. Uh, there was a little bit of resentment perhaps by some of the older founding members, but they've encompassed that. And it's quite interesting now that the, uh, they did a commemorative 60th anniversary tie, which was red and green on there. And of course they're now looking forward to the move to the new facilities at Latin Farm. With ladies rugby, youth rugby again, the junior rugby, mini rugby, it's, it's just a delight to see. The facilities at Ram Gorse are obviously past their sell-by date, um, you know, showers, there's no 
you know, communal showers with men and women are obviously not on, but <clears throat> the, the whole spirit of a club is vibrant now. And so in many ways, you talk, mentioned that the new development, it goes up d day by day, you don't really see it progress. It does. And in many ways, you look at Harlow, I guess we've gone off at a slight tangent, but you look at the Enterprise Zone, you look at the, what's going on there, there's, and I know there are controversial things like the MLN, Junction 7A, etc., but there are, there are lots of positives we've seen right now. There are, yes. Uh, Harlow, I think, suffered when the development corporation ceased because the driving force then, Harlow suddenly became an old town, no new housing. A lot of the Harlow children, you, you know the size of the Harlow schools, producing, turning out very good students to go on into it, where were they going to live? And Stalkford Thorley, you know, to me was like a Harlow new town. Stalkford people weren't like being told that. But Harlow people went there. Harlow people moved to Saffron Warden because the housing was cheaper. Obviously we know it's not that case now. And we lacked firm ceased, some good employers, the BPs of the world, IDVs, who were really good for the social fabric. We'd be kept Johnson Mathy, thousand odd men employed at Templefields, now at Tesco's. We lost a lot there and I, I do feel that looking back, the government at the time should have expanded Harlow. The Development Corporation drew plans up at that time to expand Harlow to 80,000 and it sort of stagnated. Uh, now we've got regeneration with the Enterprise Zone and others, so hopefully that will encourage people back because the large firms are the benefactors. I look at Stevenage and I see the large insurance companies there. Harlow has lost out a lot. Um, Church Langley is obviously providing a lot of housing and we will know that we need more, the population's expanded. So there is a, a feel-good factor, I think, coming back. The town centre needs regeneration, being held back. There were plans before the crash in 2008. Um, hopefully they'll be revived. And you, as you said, we'll, we'll go back a bit in a minute. When you worked in the town centre, etc., was that quite an exciting, vibrant place? No, it, was, it was on there because the, the, the market was there. It was an open market, popular. People would come from outside the area to shop in Harlow. Obviously, we have the Timothy Whites, the Marks and Spencers, BHS, FW Woolworths, and I think, you know, as children, we can all remember shopping there with a the big, massive sweet counter. As I've come along here, only in my second month of interviewing people here, and I was even speaking to one called Marlene Brooks this morning. Marlene runs the Harlow Photos, old so and new. I think that's where you spoke to yourself. But there's a real feeling of pride and ownership about a town like Harlow that, that is almost, feels to me unique, isn't it, the pride? I think there's a pride on it of seeing what it started out and as a child I saw the town expand to the west, um, up past Hare Street, round Catherine Sumner's, the schools were good, all had good reputations, uh, it was a, a good place to be brought up. And so finally you've, you've moved away now? I've moved away because of what we consider retirement needs on it, but I think you can take the boy out of Harlow, I don't think you can take Harlow out of the boy. Uh, the ones on it, the friendships here, um, we've got clients who've been, uh, grandparents were clients, so that, that's passing on. The other bit on the side of sport, football was very good. I was, part of the Sports Trust, you know, I was chairman of the Users Committee of the old Harlow Sports Centre. Great memories there and I'm sure you know people will tell you of those of the you know the Watford games of the football but the Athletics Club, Harlow Running Club. The tennis club started there. Um, others that were going on the sports centre we had some top gymnasts and others we just lost last year Mitch Fenner who talked at Mark Hall and then became, well, he was a superb gymnast himself and became the top gymnast reporter for the BBC or commentator. Um, very much a vibrant town then. It was known as a pram town, wasn't it? The pictures of the stow when everyone parked their prams outside. Um, one feels that it's coming back gradually on that side, that we are now becoming a mature town. But the one that's also the, the pride in it is not only the, the ones like the town park, the Moorhen, <clears throat> but the arts, the sculptures. You take people in, how many towns can have a Henry Moore statue? 
built into the, outside the Clevelands. Um, the, the mixture, you know, you look at Gibbard's plan, as you get older you look back and you think, God, the man had vision.